hello and welcome back to my channel if you're new here thank you so much for stopping by in this video I will be showing how I create my custom embroidered patches these are the items used to create my patches I have my easy press scissors small snippets or you can use embroidery scissors I have my felt and also iron on backing for the back of the patches. Something else that I use consistently is cutaway stabilizer. Something I like to do is I like to take like a final look at my design and my digitizing software just to kind of see if I need to make any final changes or if I'm satisfied with the design. I'm using my five and a half inch Mighty Hoop for this project. Once I trace out my design, I'm going to hit start and the machine will do the rest. It turned out really nice, nice and clear, crisp. You can see all of the lettering, very flawless. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and cut out all of the extra felt around the patches as well as the um, the backing, you know, the cutaway stabilizer so it doesn't show on the front of the patches. And once I have those cut out, I am going to trim around each patch. Okay, so one thing you have to remember whenever you're trimming around these patches, you have to have a lot of patience. If you do not have patience, do not try to make patches. <laughs> I mean it, don't, don't, don't even try. It's, like you really have to have a lot of patience because if not, then you're going to mess up and it'll just be a waste of time. Like all of the time that you put into to creating the patch and designing the patch and placing it on the machine and stitching it out, it'll all be for nothing. So just make sure that you take your time and you cut out all those extra little pieces and you trim around it really good. Take your time. Now I can say that the fame patch was not as difficult to cut out as some of the other patches that I normally make, but I do know that the cheer patch is going to be a little more challenging and you'll see. I started to trim around the cheer patch using my regular scissors, but then I realized those were going to be like too big and I'm very clumsy and I was probably going to end up cutting the patch in half. So I switched those scissors out and I started to use my really fine point scissors instead. Now remember what I said earlier, you have to have a lot of patience. <laughs> okay. So here's the end result. Very nice, very pretty. Look at that. Details. I love it, I love it. All right, so the final step when creating my embroidered patches is to add my iron on backing. As you can see here, I kind of destroyed my easy press mat, <laughs> so that's why I have the parchment paper. But before you add your heat and bond to the back of your patches, make sure that you place your patches on the opposite side. And it's best to do it this way because you can um, place the... Um, the heat and bond directly onto the back of the patch and you don't want to burn the front of the patch whenever you press it to add the um, the heat and bond. The time and temperature I use to add my iron on backing is 360 degrees for 30 seconds and you can press it at probably like medium pressure you don't need to press it too firm so just medium pressure is perfect. So here is a final look of my embroidered patches. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to know how I create these patches from start to finish, like how I digitize them, let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching.